Hello, welcome back to another episode of Train Drown. Now, I'd be lying if I said this was the first time I filmed this. Hello, welcome. Don't put me off. I have actually already filmed the this episode of Train Drown, but I didn't like it when I watched it back. Um, so we're redoing it again. Shall we see what's coming up? LNER launched its summer sales. Disruption on the furnace line. Network Rail pledges huge investment into protecting the railways against climate change. Scotland's life-changing free train travel for the blind. And we've also got a Pierce update, Lewis Rail Adventures, all of that. Uh, so, let's get into it. LNER is launching a huge summer sale on hundreds of thousands of tickets in a bid to help its customers uh, plan and book their getaways in advance for the best value. Now tickets for weekday and weekend services up to and including uh, the 6th of September went up on sale on Thursday. Now data from the firm shows that more than 6 million journeys were made between June and August last year and that's an increase of 9% on the same time frame from the year prior. Now, among the top summer journeys in 2023 were Edinburgh to King's Cross, Leeds to King's Cross, York to King's Cross, Newcastle to King's Cross, Peterborough to King's Cross, Stevenage to King's Cross, uh, and Grantham to King's Cross. Now, LNR encouraged people to book in advance directly for the upcoming summer, uh, and LNR family tickets provide travel for up to two adults and four children for a fixed price while booking direct means there's no additional booking fee and customers are kept up to date with the latest live journey alerts so there you go um are you going to be going anywhere on lnr's summer sale uh let me know in the comments the comments the, the down there or oh. i think for some people i think youtube have changed the layout on pc so so maybe they're over there or up there or I, I don't know where they've put them. I think they've put them over there. So the comments are either down there or they're over there. I don't really know. Um, right, moving on. Next, passengers have been warned that disruption on the furnace line is set to continue until at least the 21st of April. Now, last month, a train came off the tracks near Grange over Sands leading to the evacuation of the trains at four passengers and four members of staff. Now, Network Crowd there said that specialist teams have been able to successfully re-rail and move the train, but disruption is expected until at least the end of the day on Sunday, the 21st of April. Now, investigators from the Rail Accident Investigation Branch have attended the scene to determine the cause of the train derailment and what caused the void underneath the train um because you know that's that's normal isn't it a, a hole just a random hole being found in the tracks it's a bit concerning isn't it really but you know there you go uh so northern have said that you can use that tickets are being accepted on avanti west coast between carlisle and lancaster and also trans pennine express between carlisle and lancaster uh northern also said that service is running between windermere and manchester airport and um, between Barrow and Furness and Workington are not affected. Now, to assist customers uh, in completing their journeys, a rail replacement bus is running between Barrow and Furness and Lancaster in both directions. A spokesperson for National Rail said that if you are travelling to Kent's Bank, Silverdale, or Arnside, then you must board the 16-seater minibus because the full-size coaches are not able to call at them at stations. So make sure you get on the right coach. You're getting on a minibus if you're going to Kent's Bank, Silverdale or Arnside. Don't get on the big coach because you won't be getting off at Kent's Bank, Silverdale or Arnside. Um, now, uh, they're also warning to be ex they're also warning to be aware that journeys will be extended by about 90 minutes when travelling using the rail replacement buses. Um, so, like I said, Network Rail expects the line to be open later this month. 
is that exposure it's just all of a sudden it's been dark all morning because of storm kathleen and now the sun's decided to come out and it's a bit bright so let me just see whenever i come close the, the exposure goes is that too dark i don't know if that's too dark you know well anyway it just fixes itself anyway um so yeah i don't know how i feel about a, a random hole being found under the train track I don't know what to say about that to be honest. Next, Network Rail has announced that it is ramping up spending on protecting the railways from climate change. Now, the government owned company responsible for Britain's railway infrastructure said it will invest around £2.8 billion over the next five years in relation to those issues. Now, the money will be, spending, will be spent on making embankments stronger, hiring nearly 400 more drainage engineers training up hundreds of staff members to better understand weather reports and cctv cameras being fitted at high risk flooding areas now it now that follows um some major disruption over recent years with uh the stonehaven derailment a couple of years ago being caused by dodgy drainage something like that um, and then recently, Network Rail has, has faced major disruption because of collapsed embankment, notably near Bista in Oxfordshire in January, uh, and then one between Coventry and Rugby in February, the one near Bailden, not too far from here as well, and then last month in Telford in Shropshire. And actually, on the day of recording, uh, apparently there's been a little bit of a landslip near Brighton, so trains into Brighton are being affected. Um, but I've not really read that, I just saw the headline, so I don't know a lot about that, really. Now, uh, the Network Rail Chief Executive, Andrew Haynes, said that climate change is the biggest challenge that the railway faces. He said that the extreme weather of the past year that has seen around 14 named storms has taken its toll on the railway, with experts predicting more to come. Now, he said that they're responding to that challenge with a huge investment into making the railway more resilient and better performing for rail users during these events. Uh, and he said while he can't, while they can't, you know, completely waterproof the railway, that's not possible. Uh, he said that they can be better prepared and mitigate the worst that the weather throws at them. Now, um, to keep, now that's obviously because we want to keep passengers and services safe and moving, and no holes underneath trains causing it to derail. Please, thank you. Now, the spending is part of Network Rail's £45.4 billion investment plan uh, for the five years from the 1st of April, which was on the Monday just gone at the time of recording. Uh, it will spend £19.3 billion on replacing old assets with new, as well as investing in other capital expenditure projects such as digital signalling. That was a load of pigeons outside, I don't know if you heard that. Some £12.6 billion will be spent on maintenance, Three point five point three billion pound on. Whoa, can I don't I, I don't think the sun wants to really play. I think it's just trying to be a bit annoying here. So you're just gonna have to put up with it. Unless I'm overlaying some footage in which you can't see it anyway. But the sun keeps coming out and it makes everything really white. Um, so, oh well. Um, so yeah, so some about twenty two. Uh, there. About £12.6 billion will be spent on maintenance, £5.3 billion on support functions such as timetabling and IT, £4.4 billion on operations such as signalling, and £1.8 billion will be put in so-called risk fund to be used for unforeseen events. Now, the majority of Network Rail's income will come from grants from the UK and the Scottish Government. Um, it will receive £13.8 billion in track access charges from train operators and £1.7 billion commercial income such as from retail and property. Now, um, what, was it that, what was the guy's name? Andrew Haynes, Chief Executive for Network Rail. He also said that train performance has been suffering and the, and the industry must come together and make this and tackling climate change their main focus. The network rail said that taking inflation into account, its spending over the next five years 
will be £42.8 billion in real terms compared with £43 billion in the previous uh, five years. Now, enhan enhancements are funded separately and not included in that plan. So there you go. Um, that's obviously very good. I, I, I yeah. Yeah, no, no more holes underneath trains as well. Is that a thumbs up? Thanks. All right, it's everybody's favourite time of the episode now. We're going to be uh, crossing over to Pierce to talk about children writing poems and a trespassing bird. Pierce update. Hello, welcome back to another Pierce update. Back in the old office this time, not Shipley. By the way, if you can hear the noise outside, just ignore it. It's somebody out cutting the grass. An interesting one for you today. Kids are being invited to enter a national poetry contest where they could win a chance to get their poems published on trains. The competition has children aged 5 to 13 to write about one of their favourite places to travel to on a Thameslink train or a place on the train line they think other people should visit. It is being run by Govia, Thameslink Railway, GTR, in partnership with Children's Laureate Joseph Quarrell. I don't know. Submissions are now open and will close on Friday the 10th of May. Ten lucky winners will have their poems displayed on trains at stations across the GTR network so they can be read and admired by travellers far and wide. They also receive complimentary return real travel for themselves and for family members for a summer adventure of their choice. Open for six weeks, the competition aims to encourage children creativity and reduce screen time by taking young people to write a short poem about somewhere they'll love to visit. To inspire young budding poets, Joseph Coelho has written his own piece titled To Where Things We Go and inspired by family's exciting trip to Hastings on the train. Joseph Coelho, will, who will be judging the winning entries, said, Poetry is a wonderful way to get children exploring their innate creativity and their voice helping them to see that their words have power. Poems will be judged based on language and structure, theme, creativity and uniqueness and inspiration. I think I might be slightly too old for the competition. And one of the things that I found quite funny was about trespassing bird at Brighton Station. Thameslink was forced to close three platforms for about half an hour, 7 p.m while power was switched off and the hearing goal was removed. Journeys affected included Brighton to London services and the Gatway Express, with the total disruptions lasting until 8.20pm. The rail operator posted on X about the delay and advised travellers to allow an extra 20 minutes to complete journeys because of the presence of an endangered species of bird. Several people asked if it was late April Fool's joke, and as much as it sounds like it should be, it was not. At 8.30, Thameslink said the bird was safely away from the railway and apologised for inconvenience. Staff said the young bird seems to be okay and was being well looked after. That will be it for this Pierce update. I hope to catch you again in the next one. Now we cross over to Lewis in York. And it's, it's a leaf blower outside, not a grass cutter. Hi guys, and welcome back to Lewis the Travel Spotter. How are you all? Today? Yeah, actually, where is it? Today, guys. 
since last year. So here we are guys, back at York, situated on the East Coast Main Line, where she, we shall be seeing services by Northern, Transpennine Express, LNER, Cross Country, Lumo Trains, and hopefully a bit of freight. To Blackpool North. Um. where everybody's cross. Now passing through is a shed. And there's the horns are allowed to prepare to jump. Hey, and a great two time. Yes. You are a legend. 66569. You Pretty much an empty train. Thanks for that, Lewis, and thanks for that Pierce update. Now, before we move on, uh, we're going to take a look at some of your content because we've had a we've had a few videos and photos sent in um, since the last episode. So I thought I'd share them. Now, the people who they are, we've got Lily, who I saw at crew the other day. So you'll see me photo bombing one of the videos. Uh, we've also got Matthew in Crawley, and we've also got Finley. So. Your content, let's show your content. Cue your content, this is where it comes in now.
All right, good stuff. Uh, moving on now, we've got uh, two stories left. Now, uh, leading sight loss charities have hailed the Scottish Government's life-changing decision to provide free train travel for the blind and partially sighted people and their companions. And I'm really pleased that the pilot project to extend the free rail travel for companions of blind persons concessionary travel co card holders has been agreed in this uh, Scottish Government's Fair Fares review. Everyone I met that day was really vocal about this campaign, so I'm delighted and that this has been a great win for them in Sight Scotland. Uh, so Sight Scotland and its sister charity Sight Scotland Veterans have been campaigning through its fair uh, rail campaign for this result for over two years in its recently published Fair Fairs review. Pierre, Fair Fairs. Say Fair Fairs fast. Fair, fair, fair. No, say fair, fairs, fair, 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 uh, Site Scotland and its sister charity Site Scotland Veterans have been campaigning for this and in its recently published Fair Fairs review, Transport Scotland says it's, it says it plans to launch a pilot project uh, to extend free train travel for companions of blind persons consensory travel card holders. Now this policy change will have a profound impact on the lives of visually impaired individuals across uh, Scotland. Craig Spaulding, Chief Executive of Site Scotland and Site Scotland Veterans said that they are delighted the Scottish Government has announced a pilot project which will see the free rail travel. So um, there you go, that's nice isn't it? That's um, that's gets a thumbs up from me. Does it get a thumbs up from you? Let me know in the comments below what you think to that. That was supposed to go on the floor. Like so. Alright, and finally today, Network Rail has issued an urgent warning that trespassing on the railway is illegal and can cause life-changing injuries or death. Now, it comes after newly released statistics revealed a worrying rise in people trespassing on Scotland's railways. Uh, the number of incidents shown by 11% in, in the 2023-24 period compared with the 2022-23 period, with fatalities rising by 85%. Now, figures also show that that number of trespassing incidents spiked after the clocks went forward and the light nights begun during the month of April in both 2022 and 2023. Now, Innes Keith, Health and Safety and Environment Director for Network Rail Scotland, said that the railway is an incredibly dangerous environment and those who trespass are breaking the law and risking their lives. Now, uh, Scotland's Railway will target the country's eight cities with uh, a series of rail safety focused radio adverts and TV adverts, as well as a programme of activities designed to educate people about the dangers of trespassing. Now, this is in addition to the ongoing partnership with the Scottish FA, with 140,000 children and youths already benefiting from safety workshops during football camps, with a further 3,600 workshops planned to take place before 2027. Now, Network Rail and British Transport Police run the University Train Campaign, which aims to educate people of the dangers present on the railway to deter them from trespassing and keep them safe from harm. So there you go, moral of the story, don't trespass on the railways, children. Train Right, at this point we need a text on here that says train tram PSA. So the PSA this. Do you know what PSA stands for? Public safety announcement. PSA. 
Children, don't trespass on the railways. It's not good. Don't do it. It's not good. Hey. What? There's a film called Railway Children. Yeah, I know there is. Then you just mentioned it. No, I didn't. You did. You should do it with the railway children. So anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Trains Round. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, you can press like, subscribe, leave a comment as well. We like it when you leave a comment because it's nice. Um, as usual, you can get in touch, uh, email, send us your stuff if you want it to be featured. Railway, uh, the Railway Podcast at gmail.com in the description. Instagram at Trains Round Official underscore in the description. Train Siding at Trains Round Official in the description. Um, so yeah, that was this episode of Trains Round done. Thanks for watching. Bye. Say bye, Pierce. Bye, Pierce. Um, yeah.